Mikhail doesn't let me use this anymore. Says it makes us look like barbarians, uncivilized, like immigrants. Oh, yeah? I know what you're thinking. It is a bit funny coming from him. <laughs> He did not used to be like this. When we were young, at home, he was beautiful. He was happy. He made me happy. But um, then something changed years ago. I never quite knew what it was. So many years I wondered what it was or what was wrong with me, that I did not see it in him. Or I changed him. I tell you one thing and you ignore me! Oh. You stupid oh. bitch! Oh. <laughs> While he was always far from a saint, Mikhail Faustin was, at the very least, still a well-balanced individual. Even for a crime boss. Notorious for his temperament, but beloved for his integrity. It wasn't always like this. Mikhail was a great man. He had a temper, but he was fair. Now he blows his top at the slightest thing. I never know who he will shoot, who he will stab. There is so much left unsaid as to what changed all that in him. In related videos about Faustin, I've seen many comments from people giving him sympathy, stating that he really didn't deserve his fate. And back then, I couldn't understand how and why anyone could feel pity for this raging beast of a man. In any case, we will spend today dissecting the sad, disturbing, mental deterioration of Mikhail Faustin, a once benevolent Russian mobster. Faustin was born in 1963 and raised in the Soviet Union. While he served in the military during the Cold War in 1987, he met and befriended Dmitry Raskolov. They later became cellmates in a Siberian prison camp, and their bond grew to the point of them both tattooing the palms of their hand, with the tattoo symbolizing Brothers for Life. This symbolism would eventually become an initiative, for new members of his future crime organization. Faustin was always quite protective of Dmitri during prison, which he tends to hold over the latter's head to this day, to reinforce loyalty in him, something Mikhail values above anything else. At some point, after their release from the prison camp, Faustin met his future wife, Ileana, and in 1988, they had their daughter, Anna, with Mikhail being 25 and Ileana being 18 at the time of their child's birth. In 1991, after the Cold War ended, Faustin and Raskolov would go on to sell hashish to tourists in Red Square, Moscow, around the time their multiple murder convictions kicked off. In the late 90s, Faustin and Raskolov vacated themselves, Faustin's family, and all his employees from Russia to Hove Beach in Liberty City after exploiting a loophole in the immigration treaty to gain access to residency in the United States. Before he got arrested for extortion in 1998, he instituted a foothold for his mafia and invested in several business ventures, including the Perestroika Cabaret, protection rackets, cocaine distribution, pornography, and stolen goods, with the last one getting him arrested in 2002. These illegal business practices granted Mikhail and his family the wealth and privilege of a better lifestyle. They moved to the neighborhood of Beachgate, where they now live in a large house, with two luxury cars. Unfortunately, their happy, comfortable new lives eventually came to a disturbing halt. Because, at an unknown point in time, Mikhail became severely hooked on cocaine and alcohol. 
Pretty soon, this frequent, inexplicable use of drugs and alcohol transformed him from a reasonable, well-rounded leader to a tyrannical, ticking time bomb. Who acts on instinct, kills anyone who merely annoys him, and even mistreats his family. Being unfaithful to Ileana, and overly strict with Anna. So by the time of 2008, his wife and best friend became well adjusted to the new Faustin. One day, upon the murder of his debt collector Vladimir Glebov, Mikhail goes down into his basement to confront the culprit, Nico Bellic, and his cousin Roman, unwittingly. He reveals that he never really cared about Vlad and only kept him around to sleep with his sister. So rather than kill Nico, Faustin turns the gun on his underling, Andre, for being reckless enough to bring the cousins into his home like that. Impressed by Nico's callous mannerisms, Faustin employs him against his will, then shoots Roman in the stomach for screaming, and uses this as leverage to make Nico obey. This, however, will not be the last example of Mikhail's madness on full display. After the first two missions, Mikhail goes on to send Nico to carry out hits, against those who hardly did anything to deserve it from him. One of them is Jason Michaels, an enforcer in the Lost MC, all for dating his daughter, whom he wants to instill discipline into from spoiling her too much. On another day, he sends Nico to pick up this rigged truck, which could easily explode if driven recklessly. Nico is then forced to drive it across town to Chase Point, to be dropped off and blown up at used auto parts and salvage. Faustin claims that he's owed money, but this was mostly done out of spite for the garage owner, Kenny Petrovic, who happens to be the leader of another Russian syndicate, a bigger and more powerful syndicate compared to Faustin's. But Mikhail's biggest offender is sending Nico to kill Kenny's son, Lenny Petrovic. And Faustin's reasoning for why Lenny deserved death? All because of an unproven assumption that Lenny is a rat. He actually orders Nico to do this right before the missions No Love Lost and Rig to Blow. So naturally, the assassination of his son was all Kenny needed to start an all-out war between the two mafias. To protect Nico, Dimitri told Kenny during their phone call discussion that he was just a hired gun. But both men agreed that Mikhail had to go. Doing so would restore peace between the Russian families. So Nico is sent to confront Mikhail at his cabaret club. They exchange bitter words and Mikhail goes on a rant about Dimitri's treachery before leaving Nico at the mercy of his goons while fleeing to the rooftops. Through the shootout, Nico follows and corners Mikhail, where he shoots him off the roof of his club, to his death. Although things were fixed with Petrovic, Killing Faustin ironically caused more damage than not. His past warnings of Dimitri being a snake proved to be true, as this is where the latter chucks his mask off and betrays Nico, even leaving Mikhail's wife and daughter destitute without financial support from the Mafia. Faustin really is a tragic case alright, and yet, still an exceptionally fascinating character. When you watch him, you don't really feel so much of fear as you would if he existed. Instead, you're left with this sad vibe that seems to follow him everywhere. The exact culprit of his undoing remains a mystery, although there are clear hints. But it's miraculous how in spite of losing his mind over time, Loyalty was still Mikhail's most humane aspect, and one thing that never changed about him. 
I can now see why people find him sympathetic. Even for a mobster, he was never truly evil, but rather someone who was just ill-fated to give his loyalty and friendship to the wrong person for so long, until it became too late.